Good morning. Welcome. Today's portion, the fifth portion of the portion of Bracious, chapter 4, verse 19 in Genesis. Just a little background to today's very short portion. And uh, the short portion of today is certainly welcome after some of the very long portions we've had is we learned earlier that Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, Cain and Hevel, Cain killed Hevel. God came to Cain and says, why did you do it? And he said, you will have to wander the world and I will allow you to live until the seventh generation. But in the seventh generation, you will die. So we learned that Cain had a son whose name was Hanoch. So you have Cain, Hanoch, and Hanoch had a son, Erod. Erod had a son, Michuyoel. Michuyoel had a son, Misushoel. So Misushoel is generation five from Cain, and Misushoel had a son (coughs) whose name is Lemech. That's generation six. We're going to learn today about Lemech's wives and his children, and Lemech's children would be generation seven. And one, and and, and that is the fulfillment of the idea of Shivasayim Yukam, that you will be avenged in the seventh generation. Now, I also want to point out something, and that is that we're going to learn in today's portion, at the very end of today's portion, that Lemech also had a daughter. Lemech's daughter, her name was Naamo. Who was Naamo? So Rashi tells us Naamo was Mrs. Noah. The famous Noah from the ark, his wife was Naamah, seventh generation of Cain, from Cain. But who was Noah? So we're going to learn as time goes on that parallel to this entire narrative is another narrative going on. And that is that 130 years after Adam and Eve were evicted from the Garden of Eden, and they had been separated for so many years because of the troubles that they experienced. They'd been, as we say today, in therapy, popping Prozac. A hundred and thirty years later, they decide it's time to renew their vows, and they decide it's time to have more children. And that's when they had another child named Shace or Seth. And then Noah is not a descendant of Cain. He's a descendant of this Shace or Seth. In fact, he's the 10th generation. So while all of this is happening with Cain's children, on a parallel line, there's another child, albeit younger, who brings forth 10 generations, and Noah is the 10th generation. So the 10th generation uh, from Adam marries the 8th generation from Adam. The 10th generation is through Shais. The 8th generation, Naamo, is through Cain. And that's the Shidduch. So I hope I didn't lose you, but now we go to today's portion. By the way, when I was a kid, they used to pay us to memorize things. So One of the things that I got paid 50 cents for is to memorize the generations from Adam to Noah. Now, it's been a long time, and 50 cents isn't worth that much today, but let's see. Adam, Sheis, Enosh, Canaan, Malal, Yered, Chanoch, Mesushelech, Lemech, Noach. Lemech is not the same Lemech as here. They have the same name. It's like, you know, like Jack and Jack. One is Jack Kennedy, the other is Jack Daniels. Two different worlds. Page 43, verse 19. 
Vayikach loy lemech shtei noshim. Lemech married two wives. Now, why do we need to know how many wives Lemech married? I mean, who cares? Rashi will tell us. It's describing the decadence of the time. Remember, this Lemech is already in the flood generation. So we're learning about the decadent practices of the flood generation. Who are these wives? Shem Ho'achas, wife number one, was Odo. V'shem Hashenis, and wife number two was Tzila. What's the significance? Rashi, 19. Vayikach lo'y lemech, lemech took, lo'y ho'yeh lo'y lefodesh kol zeh. He did not need to spec out all this information. We're really very disinterested in lemech social life. Elo, however, he does tell us, he, meaning the Torah, tells us, lelamdeinu misei fo'inyan, because we need to learn from the end of the story, why the beginning was what it was, and the beginning caused the end. What does that mean? Shekiyam HaKadosh Baruch Hu after God kept His promise. Sheomar Shiva Sayim Yukom and He said that Cain, Cain's murder of Abel will be revenged, avenged in the seventh generation. Omad Lemech, Lemech arose, Lacha Shehelid Bonim, after Cain had children, and I just reviewed the generations earlier. The also, and through these two wives, Lemech brought about Deir Shvi, the seventh generation, which we're going to learn about today. The Horagas Cain, and then he killed Cain in a hunting accident because he went out hunting, as I mentioned the other day, with Dick, with Dick Cheney. As we're going to learn the story tomorrow. Zeo Omar, this is what it says, Ki ish harakti lepitzi, I have slain a man for wounding me. Shtei noshim, two wives, kach hayadarkan shodera amabal. This was the custom of the generation which was inundated and destroyed by the flood. They used to regularly marry two wives. Why? Achas lepirya verivya, one wife was to bear children. One wife was the child-bearing wife. The achas and the second wife was letashmish for intimacy. And the one for intimacy should not bear children, not to ruin her figure. Zu shehi letashmish, the one for intimacy. How could he make sure she doesn't bear children? He put her on the pill. Except that they didn't have pills back then. The only pill they had is maybe Tylenol. Mashke case shall they used to give her to drink a cup of a certain drug that made her infertile. Or at least it was supposed to make her infertile if it worked. Today's portion we're going to learn that it didn't work. in order that she should become sterile and infertile. and she was always dressed to the nines like a bride. Umachila Madanam, she was fed. The best of foods, caviar. No, I'm just making that up. But the other wife, she was the one that was just set to the side and she was ignored. She was in mourning like a widow while the other one was running around to nightclubs. She was barefoot and pregnant from the kitchen. And this is the expression of Job. Raya, Akora Leiselet, he is a companion to the barren that bears not. Va'amona Leyetiv, and to the widow, he doesn't act well. The barren one is his companion. The widow, she lives like a widow without any companionship, because all she does is have babies. Kemeshim Eferish Bagotas Chelik, as the Medrash explains, the decadent ways of that time. The Torah is not telling you because it's a good idea. It's a terrible idea. Oda, so we learn in this verse that this Lemech had two wives. One was Oda. Oda says Rashi, here she appeared of you. That's the one who was for childbearing. Al Shem Shemeguna Olov, Umuseres Meetzle. And she was called Oda because she was despised by him and set aside. He did not socialize with her. He didn't take her to clubs. He didn't take her to banquets. He never took her to a Dodgers game. 
Odo targum shel suro. The word odo means put away, set aside. Tzilo was the social wife. He shel tashmish. She was the one with whom he was constantly intimate. Al shem she yeshevas tomedi b'tzilo because she was always in his shadow. Wherever he went, she was there. Divrei agoda heim bebreishes rabba. This is the story in the medrash. Okay, so now the, wife, the childbearing wife had a child. So what else is known? Vateled Odo, Odo had as Yovo, a son named Yovo. Who was Yovo? Who Hoyo, he was the famous Yovo. Yovo, Avi, he was the father of, the inventor of, Yoshev Eil Umikna. He was the first one that was able to build tents and take his cattle and sheep into the desert and set up a headquarters to be able to really have a lot of cattle and a lot of sheep and have the the, the supplies to be able to have them function and grow properly. This was his invention, this whole idea of Yoshef Ohelu Mikne. Rashi, Avi Yoshef Ohelu Mikne, Hu Ayarish, and Leroy Behemoth, Bamid Boris, the commentaries on Rashi explain, this is not to suggest that he was the first cattle rancher. Obviously not. Shepherds went way back. But Leroye Behemus Bamid Boreyes. He was the first who went into the desert. Yeshev Eholim dwelling in tents. He developed that technology. Chedesh Kana Mantir. Chedesh Kana Mantir. Bishvil Miretzene because of the need for constant fodder for his sheep. And when the food was consumed in one place, he would go pitch his tent in another place. That's one interpretation. The Medrash tells us that he developed and built churches. Houses of pagan idol worship. Pagan idol worship is forbidden for all descendants of Adam. That's one of the seven Noahide laws, which we'll learn later. As it says in Yechezkel, Semel, Hakino, Hamakne, the image of jealousy which provokes God. So Makne and Mikne are similar. Vechein Ochiv, soon we learn about his brother as well. He was also not such a good guy. Where we learn Tephis, Kino that he took up creating and using musical instruments, not just musical instruments, not just that he worked for iTunes, but Lezamer Lave de Zora, he actually sung and played for pagan idol worship. And again, we're learning about the decadent practices of that generation. 21, the shame of Yuvo. His brother's name was Yuvo. Who hoyo? This guy, Yuvo, was Avi Kotefis Kinder Vugov, the father of all the harps and the pipes and the other musical instruments. So that's the two children of wife number one, the wife who was supposed to have children. Now, drugs are not reliable. He kept giving Silo, the other wife, these drugs to drink. Did they work? They didn't work. So she has a baby. So he sues the company. What else is no? That's why they had trial lawyers. Vitsila gam he tsila as well. Yoda, she gave birth to a child, and they named him Tuval Kayan. Tuval Kayan, like Jack Jr. Tuval Kayan. Leitesh, what was he known for? He was the forger, the inventor, the creator, Kolchedesh, Necheshes, Ubarzel, of instruments of brass and iron. Rashi explains from the oral law he was a weapons merchant. He created knives and swords and all kinds of weapons of mass destruction, at least for the time. Now, this Tuval Kayin also had a sister, so the drugs failed twice. Vaches Tuval Kayin, and the sister of Tuval Kayin was Namo. Namo means pleasant, Namo means sweet. Nama means her deeds were pleasant and sweet before Hashem. And this was the future Mrs. Noah. Rashi, Tuval Kayin, Tevelum Nose Shal 
He improved upon the work of Kayin, Teva, Lush, and Tablin. He put spices on top of the other work. Tibel, Vihiskinum, Nasi, Shal Kayin, he seasoned and improved the work of Kayin, Lasis, Clay, Zion, Lereitzchim, to make implements of war for murderers. Why? Because remember, we learned earlier this week that Kayin was troubled. He, he wanted to kill Hevel, but he had no idea how to kill Hevel. He looked on the internet, how to kill, but he couldn't find it. Nobody was ever killed. So he finally figured out after leaving tons of wounds on Hevel. So his great great grandson, Tubal Kayan, he improved the technique of murder. So he became a weapons merchant. He sharpened tools of copper and iron. As it says in Job, he sharpens his eyes upon me. So that's the usage of the word lotesh. Cheresh ain eloshin peyo. Cheresh is not the form of poel. And now, eloshin peyo. Share no could come as cotton, but Tamil amount to claim that um mechadid. He sharpens other things. Um etzach to call clayumnus. Necheshe subaza. So he had a knife sharpening and a sword sharpening store. And finally, Rashi here says, Namo, who is Namo? Ishto shall Noach. Namo is Noach's wife. And this becomes one of the famous riddles that they ask to children in cheder and schools. They ask children, who was Noah's wife? What was her name? And the kid says, how should I know his na- her name? Mrs. Noah. And the answer is, if you study chapter 4, verse 22, Rashi, you'll know her name is Nama. And then they'll ask you, uh, which biblical figure had an exceptionally beautiful grandmother? Or, or mother? And the answer is Nama, because Nama's mother was Tzila, who was exceptionally beautiful. These are some of the questions that they ask Cheder kids to see if they're on the ball, because these are things that are kind of hidden and tucked in into Rashi. Now, tomorrow, we're going to learn about the story with Lemech and his marital challenges, and Lemech went to marriage therapy, and his wives didn't want to be with him, and the whole story of how Lemech inadvertently killed, uh, he was guilty of manslaughter, he killed his great-great-great-grandfather, Cain, thinking he was uh, a deer in a hunting accident, fulfilling the prophetic statement of Hashem, but we'll continue that, God willing, tomorrow.